All right, you guys, so we're back with another addition to the Tacoma. Um, pretty much all the Tacoma stuff I'm adding is very practical stuff. So, I mean, it is a perfect all around truck, but it is missing a few things that not any cars really come with. So today I have a dash cam, a dual dash cam right here. So this is a Red Tiger um, dash cam. It is a 4K dash cam. Um, from what I believe, it's only 4K in the front and um, 1080p in the back. So, but I mean, I don't think we need to be perfect, like crisp everywhere. But it's a very small, compact um, unit. So, very easy to just hide on the dash and no one will see it. So, looking at this dash cam, like I said, it's very small. Um, this is the front dash cam right here, and then you have all the other accessories. This is the mount that mounts to the window, your rear dash cam, gives you plenty of extra wire to go to the back, and then this will plug into the cigarette lighter. I'm not sure if I want to do this or I have a hardwire kit. Um, we'll take a look at this too. I'm debating on if I want to do hardwire or not. Because something I have seen on the Tacoma specifically, this probably works for other cars as well with the auto dimming mirrors and stuff. I have seen people get um, things that splice off of the auto dimming mirror for the power instead so I'm not sure if I'm gonna use like I almost want to do that in the sh in the long run so that way I can eliminate most of the wire except for the rear dash cam but for now I think I'm debating on if I want depending on where the add fuse is I'm going to try and just use that All right, so hopping in the car. Um, I totally forgot that was even there. Um, there's a sun pass thing there, but this pro this came with the car. So I'm gonna take that off. I think that's probably where I'm gonna mount this at. Is right there. But I'd rather it not be underneath the rear view mirror, I would rather have it up higher so I don't see it at all when you're driving. So, yeah, let me remove this. Hopefully the heat is going to help remove this a lot easier. All right, so after about like 10 minutes of scrubbing, I finally got the residue off from the sticker. I mean, it came the sticker came off easy, but it left a pretty bad residue. So, finally got that off. Now we will Try to figure out where we want to mount this. I think, like I said, pretty much I want to try to get it as centered as possible and high enough so I don't see it when I'm driving. So, and it's nice because that will come on and off. Like, you can just stick this on there and then actually pull the dash cam off if you needed to. So, but I think that looks about right. So, I'm gonna put it right there. So, I don't want to go any higher because there's a slight texture there and I don't think it'll stick good. So, I'm gonna stick it right on the smoothest part of the glass right there, and then that'll be where we run all of our cables to. Got that mounted, looks pretty good. I mean, from the driver view, you really wouldn't be able to tell it it's there at all. So that's pretty much what you want. You don't want any distractions. So now that we got that mounted, now we'll figure out where, I think I might run that down to here. And use that as my power source inside of here. Because the only other one is right here and I don't want any of the cables to show. So I'll probably clean this out and then run a wire or something from the inside of that. I think I'm gonna decide to go the hard wire route because I think it'll be a lot easier to run the wires than trying to run everything inside of here because I would have to cut some plastic down there and 
just wouldn't be the easiest. And something else too that I hate that I've noticed a lot of dash cam people doing is making this one solid wire versus like putting this as like a USB end and then plugging it into like a USB cigarette lighter. Um, it just makes it more of a hassle because that means you gotta start from here and then work your way up to the dash cam. So it's just, that's something I don't like to do, but I'm just going to forget about that. But instead, I'm just gonna hook it up to the fuse panel underneath the the dash. I think I'll be able to get this to work a lot cleaner. Um, and I just tested everything just to make sure everything was gonna work. So I wanna tell you, that's, that's the location where I put the fuse tap in it. Um, it is, if you look at this, it is going to be the 10 amp washer one, which is like right here. So it's really hard to see the camera's not focusing, but yeah, I, it's like eight up or something. So it's going to be the 10 amp right after a 30 amp. So that's the one I tapped into and I took off this, this panel down here. So I could find a ground, which I just loosened that bolt down there. And I just put that thing over it, the ground cable that comes from the hardwire kit. And then I hooked up the, the B plus wire. That's the only wire that I care about because that's gonna supply power to the dash cam all the time. This one says it's gonna be accessory power, but I'm tapping into an accessory fuse, so only want this to be on when the car turns on. I don't want it to like drain the battery or anything like that. So that's what I'm gonna tap into. This wire is just gonna get tucked up with it. I'm not going to bother with it at all. I might wanna cut this end so that way it doesn't, um, gr it doesn't hit any other wire and short circuit anything, so, but this is the fuse I took out. It's a 10 amp fuse and I replaced it with the one that came with the fuse stamp. And it looks like these are like a, a mini, short mini fuse. So that's what comes with it. That's why the kit comes with a few different versions. So I'm going to tidy this up, make this look really nice and then put all the panels on. And then we do have to run this up to the dash cam. So, but that should be pretty simple. We're just gonna pop off this panel and then run that wire up to it. All right, so I just wanna give you guys an update of how I'm doing this. I showed you guys how I was wiring it. I just kinda of tucked all my wires in here. I used a a co-hanger right here. Um, I just fished the co-hanger down there, got it to here, pulled my wire up that way. You could do either or, you could try to fish it down, whatever's easier for you. Um, but, and now, oh, and I meant to show you guys the pillar here. So, pillar is actually pretty simple to take off. Um, there is this hidden screw you will have to take off. Just pry this um, airbag clip off and there will be a 10 millimeter bolt inside of there. And once you do that, you'll just pull back and up and then you'll get that out of there. And then you'll get access to behind here. So just be cautious, there is an airbag here, but should not go off at all. But now we're gonna run this wire up above the airbag, zip tie it to the already wires inside of here, and then we'll tuck the rest up underneath the headliner here. Very simple, easy to do. And then that'll be wired for the front, and then we'll take the back wire here, and we'll run it up and we'll go that way on this side of the truck. So that way we're not running. I mean, it could go either way. Um, depending on how, how much wire I can tuck up in here. If I can do two of these wires in here and it doesn't want to like fall out, I might go this way because I already have everything torn apart here. But if not, I will run it that way. And I'll probably run it down just because it's a lot easier to run it on the floor panels than it is to run it underneath here. So I'll probably do it that way. But yeah, just wanted to show you guys how I was doing this. Now I'm just gonna zip tie everything, tuck it in, and then 
the front will be done. The front one all zip tied, running along the wire harness right along there. Um, and I did try to plug in the rear one and I tucked it up around here, which looks like it's going to work. So I'm just going to follow along exactly how I did down here. And I'm gonna run it along the floorboards underneath all this stuff. So that way, this will be all clean and hidden as well. And I won't have to, I mean, it might be better to go that way, but I'm just going to do this way because it's going to be a lot easier for me. So, and also if I ever had to take this out, everything will be all on one side. So you do have enough room to tuck two wires up in here. So there will be, you will see these two wires going there, but there really isn't much you could do about that other than getting something like how they have like a cable management clip or something like that. And maybe I might do that. I don't know. But I'm just going to run this one down here along there. And then the the best tip I can give you is whenever you guys are going to do this is if your car has a wiring harness there, you can run your wire there too. So there's a reason why they ran their harness there. So you running an extra wire along that harness isn't going to ruin anything. So just zip tie it so that way it stays around that same harness and then you won't have any problems with it getting hung up or stuck on anything. So I got everything all tucked up and behind the pillar and I ran it down here. You can see my wire is right here. I just opened up these clips here and to just put my wire in there. I ran it underneath a couple other things. And then when I got here, I just pretty much like flossed it through. Like I ran it over there, kind of lifted this up here a little bit, pushed the wire in just enough so it'd be underneath. Then came to the other side and pushed it in as well and slowly just started pushing it in and then pulling it and that way it got underneath this panel so and then i just again went inside of these clips here you can see my wire here and now i'm here so this part right here it's been just a tedious process it's not hard just very tedious so just trying to make sure you get it hidden and no one's going to be able to see it so now I'm going to bring this seat down and we're going to try to run this up like I don't know what's going to be the easiest yet so I'm going to kind of just trying to do this and see what's going to be the easiest but either try to get it behind this up over here around and then up into the headliner. And then, obviously, this has a sliding glass window, so I'm not sure. I think I might. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet, because I didn't think this through of which way that window slides. I think that window slides towards this way, so I really can't put it on there. I should have. Yep, that would have been... The better plan is run it on that side because the window does not slide over that way. So, but I don't know yet. We'll see how far this window slides over. And if it's off center a little bit, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. It's mainly just to be able, you'll still be able to see everything coming out of there. It just won't be centered. I ended up making it super easy. I just tucked it behind this weather stripping. And then I went, I'm going to tuck it a little bit more behind here. And then I ran it up over here. So um, on here, the headliner seems to have a lot more slack in it. So you're gonna have to really try to like push that wire as far up as possible. As well, if you are on a truck like this one, whether it's a Tacoma or any other, any other car or truck, that has a sliding rear window, watch where it actually moves so that way you know if you want to try to get it as close to center as possible, you know that your glass moves that way. So you don't want to put anything over there. 
and the glass moves it doesn't move over here so I can get it as close as I want right here and the glass won't interfere with anything so that is a plus for me right there so I did go on the right side now that I got my camera here I'm gonna put some double-sided tape I got this camera mounted in the back all my wires are pretty good tucked as good as they're going to get in the back here so because there is a lot bigger gap here but I got it pretty decently um, but for a truck I've never really thought about this but having a vertical window really makes mounting one of these dash cams like nearly impossible to see so that way it's like looking out the back so instead of mounting it to the glass I actually just double side taped it to the headliner I, don't, I might regret this I don't know let me guys let me know down below if that's gonna be a dumb choice for me but they also include these little tiny screws they're little tiny like Phillips screws that I also screwed into the headliner it's in such a small little space that I don't think that hole is really gonna matter if I do ever take this out it's such a small space and I'm not even like I'm literally just using a normal screwdriver to push it in so it's not like it's even drilling or anything into the headliner but it's just going to be a added protection to hold this up so but otherwise I might see if they make certain mounts for these for a truck window but this should work for what I need it to so but yeah I got it mounted as close to center as possible without interfering with my sliding window all right so I got this all running um remember you do need an SD card to put in here uh, but I'm using like a Lexar SD card that I had from one of my previous dash cams and that seems to be working fine I just formatted it on here just to make sure I won't have any errors but they they do say that you can um, connect this dash cam to your phone but I am not having any success and I don't know what I'm doing wrong but the internet thing pops up on like when I go to search Wi-Fi's and stuff like that this does pop up but for some reason it just fails to connect but that's not a big deal to me because it's not like I need to view this on the actual my phone but it would just be cool if I could but I can if I ever need it I can just take the SD card out and put it into a computer but I mean everything's running good you can see the front camera here and then the back camera is up in the corner and if you hit the button on the left side, you can swap between front camera, back camera. Like if you really want like a better view, you can get both front camera. Oh, that's off. Then you got front camera, rear camera, or both. I'm just going to keep it on both, but everything seems to be good. I'm going to get some good driving footage to see how well the camera quality is on here. But looking at it, I mean, it looks relatively good on here. So right now it's recording 2160p on the front and 1080p on the back. So that is good. I think the only way to get 4K is if you're not running a rear dash cam. But 2160, 2K seems to be good enough for me. But I mean, all in all, this is a nice dash cam for what it is. It is a very highly rated dash cam on Amazon. So that's why I wanted to try it out and see how well it worked. Um, the hardwire kit worked great too, so if you wanted to hardwire it like I did, instead of running it to a cigarette lighter, you can do that. Just wish the, the interface here, I mean, you got plenty of options to like adjust everything, but I just got my, because like right there you can set the Wi-Fi, but every time I do that, this thing says restart to disable Wi-Fi, I have no idea, like I said. It just doesn't seem to be perfect, but like I said, there is an app. It's called Red Tiger, and that should connect to these dash cams, but it's just not working properly for me. So, but all in all, everything seems to be great. I have no complaints. We'll just see how long everything lasts on this dash cam, because for some reason, after like a few months, they just start lagging and the SD cards just stop reading properly, but. But if you guys are interested in picking up your own dash cam, I will be putting a link down below. So that way you can grab your own if you're interested in this. Like I said, it's nice to just have a dash cam just because 
nowadays like driving and everybody out there you can never just trust anybody so having a dash cam especially a rear and front dash cam will definitely save you if something stupid happens with all the other people out there all right but that's gonna be the rest of this video but if you guys are new don't forget to smash that like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys next time